Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of CVTV. My name is Carlos, and I'm here with my co host, David Dawkin, as well as Adam from Battle Corals. And I just want to say hello to everybody. How are you guys? Awesome. Super good, man. Always good to see you, Carlos. <laughs> Uh, so we are thrilled to have you here as a guest. Yes. Um, uh, you know, every time we do a show with you, we actually have, uh, there's a lot of views. Uh, people people oh, yeah. really like, people really like your stuff, man. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you know. it. I mean, it's been a while. Actually, you guys used to come and, you know, like COVID happened. And I, I think we did a couple uh, during that and we weren't going anywhere. Uh, but you and Jeremy are definitely due for a visit to uh, the shop. I mean, a lot <laughs> has changed. You know, I mean, I'm kind of in a constant state of changing and tweaking things. And uh, I think since the last time you were here, uh, I've got lots of cool stuff to show you, including I'll even say like I've gone full hydro so we can talk about that later. But, uh -oh. uh, you know, <laughs> well, yes. be before we get started here, I just yes. want to say hello to everybody, all our listeners and our watching people. Um, this is CBTV podcast. Um, you can find it on Spotify. Also, you can watch our beautiful faces on YouTube. So if, mm -hmm. you if you like what you hear, if you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. So thank you so much for everybody for joining us. I'm here with David Dakin, owner of Coralview, and he's also my co-host for every show. And we've invited, you know, Adam Derrickson here from Battle Corals. And I mean, Battle Corals, I remember back in the days, Battle Corals, and you had that, that, that website has not changed because you don't change <laughs> what what works mm -hmm. i mean if anybody has had a chance to check out battlecorals.com and it's almost like an art website I, I don't know if i'm watching if i'm looking at corals or if i'm looking at pieces of art that i can buy so i can hang on my walls yeah actually <laughs> a little bit of both let me just back up uh thanks for having me on guys i mean i really appreciate this yeah. as always uh <laughs> oddly enough you know i did start a little side hustle that says that's called battle prints where they there i literally do sell prints that you can hang on the wall they just have my pictures so oh, uh cool. in, in actuality what you just said is true uh but i don't know i mean i started in 2011 like i officially started the started battle corals and the, the original site i designed on my own and it was just kind of like I, I didn't do the coding but it was kind of like a platform that I, I plugged all the pictures in and uh it was pretty rough i was spelling errors all over the place you know grammar stuff like crazy and uh, a good friend of mine my developer now a guy named nick uh out in washington like I had a lot of people kind of contact me saying, hey, you need a new site. Let me help you. Let me help you. And I wasn't really thrilled about you know, kind of what they had to offer until this guy came along. And it was just like, oh, that looks awesome. It kind of has a full widescreen. Like it was really modern. And, and even now it's kind of old. I mean, we've updated it a couple of times. But uh, it, what the idea was the wall of coral. And that's kind of what we went with. And uh, that is exactly what it is. Now, not mm -hmm. all those pieces are always available, of course. And, you know, even if it's not available today and I don't even have it, there's a good chance I, I will get it again. So, like. I'm not taking pieces off. Uh, there's a couple. Pink Panther would be a good example. I don't have it. Haven't had it for years. I might get it back. I'm not taking <laughs> it off the site. Anyway, I appreciate the kind words. I work on it really hard, and I had a guy go over every single line when I first redid it. That was like back in 2014 uh, for grammar and punctuation and uh, spelling. So, although I think <laughs> you even found a couple. Uh, that, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I mean, I, I try hard. I mean, you know, I'm not that, you know, I'm a stickler for detail, but I mean, it's, it's a reflection of my own, you know, personality. So, we try to make yeah. things right. Anyway. Um, again, good to be here, guys. I mean, I appreciate the kind words. So, Adam, I got to ask you, what, yes. what inspired you to, to get into this? How did this e evolve into Battle Corals? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I'll sum it up. I could probably ramble for a while. But, you know, many, many years ago, around, you know, the, around the year 2000, uh, I got into saltwater. I got a little 10-gallon tank. There was a local place in Lake Geneva. Uh, it was called Ken's Animal House. And I walked in there and I said, I want a saltwater tank. He ended up selling me a little 10 gallon tank with like a little whisper filter. And uh, I think he might've sent me home with some gravel or something in a heater. Mm -hmm. And uh, mind you, this is probably 2002, I guess if I had to, had to guess. Uh, I was living in Lake Geneva at the time and I ended up moving uh, back in with my parents. Of course, I'm still kind of young in my early twenties and uh, set up another tank. Like everything's great, everything's great. And uh, got my hands on a 90 gallon tank that I intended on setting up, you know, in the future. And, you know, I don't think you ever saw that. I've got some pictures of it, like on my, uh, uh, my, on my, it was on my space. Anyway, um, a friend of mine had like a, like a hundred pounds of live rock that a friend of his had thrown away. 
And it was like, okay, uh, do you want this light rod? You can have it for free, but you got to put it somewhere. So that night I started getting water in this big 90 gallon tank that I had intended on setting up, you know, in the future. And that, that 90 gallon tank was set up for a while. I got a lot of frags from you, Carlos. I got a lot of frags <laughs> from uh, Phil and of course, Dave and my good buddy, Chad Smith, uh, kind of got me going, you know, a lot of, you know, digitatas and like old, you know, just like yeah. the classics at this point and stuff that we don't even see a whole lot of, uh, a lot of caps from Phil. Anyway, moving forward, uh, a couple of years went by, I tanked it great, and I got another tank, which is one, the one you might remember, it was a big DOS, uh, that weird kind of 12-sided, uh, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that weird tank. It was just a weird kind of weird open top tank. And uh, that's probably to this day one of my favorite tanks that I had. Uh, during that time, you know, I'd gotten a little more active on uh, Reef Central, and, you know, I was, you know, poor, broke, what have you, in the early 20s, and you need to... Uh, buy stuff <laughs> you know i mean yeah. it was an expensive hobby then it's even more now yeah. but uh you know in fact i used uh i used coral view uh when the, that 10 the reflux 10k came out yeah and uh you know before that i was using xms and that sort of thing um but salt and light bulb that's what i always tell people i needed salt i needed to buy light bulb didn't have any money so i started <laughs> selling little monty packs on uh reef central <laughs> and that kind of blossomed into selling more packs and selling more packs and eventually and i think i even i like emailed you the day this happened but debbie dc the uh, the mod there pardon me she um you know sent me a really polite email she said adam you know you're great you know we, we love you on the on the website i mean you can try your contributor we love it but you can't sell in here anymore you're what we call a commercial hobbyist yeah unfortunately and, I yeah that. Well, fine. i mean you know I, I was milking it i knew that that day would come and uh, and that that very day, and I and I thanked her. I, I said, Debbie, and I even I emailed you. I said, Carlos, I kind of got this problem with one of this mod. You know, you know her because you were a mod on, on Reef Central as well. Anyway, long story short, that day I registered the domain because I had kind of been mulling over, you know, the idea. I registered the domain and uh, officially became a business. And and I guess that was like 2011 now. So a lot had a lot of years had passed between the 10 gallon tank and you know the big DOS tank. But uh, as I kind of became more active on Reef Central and selling, I kind of got, uh, you know, people got to know me a little bit. And I, I sent this big chain letter to all my customers, you know, just saying, I'm going to give it a shot. I've got my battle core with my business. It's my website. And, uh, you know, like I said, that was 2011. So we're turning back the clock a little bit. And, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah, I remember you stepping I remember you stepping at the house on our way to Harbor Aquatics. Remember, we all we, we all used to go down to Harbor Aquatics. So then you, Phil, Dave, and everybody stopped at the house. You picked up a whole bunch of stuff. We went to Harbor did, Aquatics, <laughs> picked up a whole bunch of stuff, and then we drove back here. Um, well, uh, that, that was a I'll, long time ago. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll never forget. We, uh, you know, me, me and Chad were really good friends. And Chad, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of pinged off each other. And like, like I was kind of a little better at kind of like the mechanical side of it. And I think he might have been a little better at like the the core, you know, keeping coral alive and like his color and his growth was always better than mine. And, uh, you know, so we worked really well together and Chad, he got out of the hobby, unfortunately, but, uh, I still, I still have like some stuff from Chad, but <laughs> I'll never forget the time we went down to IMAC and it might've been 2006 or seven. Oh or my God. <laughs> and I kind of just told you this the other day, but we stopped at your house and you had a 75 gallon, you know, lit with, um, uh, the, the blue part, uh, help me out. Uh, the Ushios, the Ush one Ushio and two, one 400 watt Ushio in the middle mm -hmm. and two 400 watt Iwasakis on each side. Uh -huh. And then I had uh, VHO at Super <laughs> super Atinix, that on a 75 gallon tank. Wow. It looked incredible. <laughs> I mean, the tank, the tank looked insane. Like this was, I think this was around the time that I still, I had that 90. So like, like I kind of knew, I mean, I, I knew a little bit, but I'd never seen a tank like with coral that looked like that. You had like blue tenuouses and stuff. Yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, just incredible stuff. And I think you sent us home with some stuff that day yeah. too. Uh, but what I, what I will take, uh, what, what stuck with me the most that day is you had an apex and we don't have to talk all about apex, but uh, you were, you told me no, about it, that was was back back then. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, like I mean, I had a Medusa uh, temperature controller. That was it, and like a little. I think I didn't even have a pH controller on my calcium reactor. Like I had one thermo, like one thermostat. That was it, and a timer, like a hardware timer for the lights. But you had uh, like this is just what blew me away. You like you're telling me if it gets too hot, you know, it'll turn these pumps off. It'll turn the lights off. And, and, and what, what blew my mind the most was that if, if the whole, if everything got too hot, it will turn the air conditioner on. And, <laughs> yes. And, you know, just yes. Like, I did have that going. <laughs> the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's and, awesome. you know, again, we're turning at the clock here and obviously we've come a long, 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 long way. 
yeah. but it wasn't until that, like, kind of like that Carlos experience where I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is like, I'm super impressed. Like this guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. Like, yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't even believe it, but you know, again, so, it, you know, but inspirational stuff. I mean, that kind of got, that just kicked me into high gear, Yeah, you know? And what, what is it that, um, you know, going back to that question that Dave and, you know, elaborating on that one mm -hmm. is that what is it that you enjoy the most of it? What is it that you enjoy Nowadays the most? Nowadays still? Uh, <laughs> that is another great question. I believe it or not, I still love getting new coral. I mean, like for me, I'm an SPS guy. And, yeah. uh, you know, even if I'm getting uh, just today, you can't really see, but in that tank, um, I can't really do anything. Um, a friend of mine, Tim, uh, in Ohio, you know, Thurman, mm -hmm. um, Every once in a while, I'll get coral from him, and I still enjoy just opening up coral. You know what I mean? Even if I don't yeah. know what it is, if it comes a little ugly, uh, the whole experience of, like, obtaining new coral and kind of watching it uh, yeah. blossom into something, like, fancy or impressive uh, has not gotten old. I can't say that it, right. that it might not at some point, but, uh, like, it's the thrill is still very much uh, uh, in me for that. Um, yeah. You know, as I have, you know, been doing this for a while, uh, I've made a lot of friends, you know? I mean, I, I can't complain. I knew you before I started the business, so I guess you don't, you don't, <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't count, but like a lot of, I have like, I've kind of got this core, not that I, I mean, I love you, man, but um, I kind of have this core group of customers that have kind of turned like customer, like full on friend. We text all the time and, and that sort of thing. Uh, people that I wouldn't have otherwise known uh, if I wasn't doing this. So things like yeah. that, you know, that have kind of stuck cool. with me. Uh, relationships all over the country too. That I mean, I'm kind of a loner anyway. You know? and I don't <laughs> travel at all because I'm kind of, you know, stuck in my cage my you know it's hard to travel yeah. <laughs> doing what i do but yeah. um you know at the end of the day like i'm kind of living the dream you know i've got this mm. thing i'm i you know i managed to parlay like a, a measly hobby into a, like a viable career and uh that's awesome you know what i mean when it comes to that sort of thing even if i'm having a bad day you know on my worst day i can still say you know i did construction before this and you know i learned a lot and i could build that sort of thing uh, but you know, even on my worst day, I'm not like stuck on a roof in the middle of July, you know, sweating mm, and breathing yeah. dust all day, you know? So, I mean, I, 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 I kind of have to put things in perspective when it comes to that sort of thing. So Absolutely. Uh, I have a lot of complaints, although, like I said, it's hard to travel. I, you know, I know my wife would like to travel. The kids would like to travel. That is one thing. I mean, mm. I kind of, I got to kind of, it's one of the trade-offs for sure. Like it's hard yeah. for me to leave. I don't have a lot of reliable people around that I could count on to watch the tank and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. started to, my mom said, here's what you got to do. Uh, get a binder and tell me what you might need someone to do when you're gone. And, I, and oh, well, I, there's one, I mean, the primary thing, like if I got hit by a car tomorrow and I was in a hospital, yeah. uh, someone has to turn my RO filter on. Like I have to yeah. make it every day. So there's a couple massive essentials that need to be taken care of, you know, in the event of like that I'm just gone for the night or something. Um, and I have started to... <laughs> I've started to do that. I showed like, they know how to do that now. Like if, you know, if they need to do that, I mean, if I had to leave for a weekend or something anyway, um, well, we got to get the hydros to turn that stuff yeah. on for you. Well, yeah. I mean, the problem is my, my art. In fact, I did a funny little uh, Instagram video a while back about how I actually turned the darn thing on. Like, you know, I kind of flush it. I, you know, it's a multi-step process and I got little signs and stickers all over the wall, like hit this button, turn that bell. And, uh, but it works great, but it's not just like flip the switch and turn everything on. So, um, I did walk my mom through it though. <laughs> so, you know, in the event that, you know, maybe my wife and I want to go away for the weekend or something, because unfortunately uh, my, my reservoirs are in my attic and uh, I've got like four uh, 40 gallon tanks. So I don't have a ton of, of uh, freshwater top off. I've got enough for maybe a day and a half. Unfortunately uh, I didn't, I started off with a bunch of weight up there and it kind of bent. Uh, I was a little uncomfortable having that much weight above yeah. all the tanks, you know, with the reservoirs. So I kind of, I, 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 I shrank the tanks. So, you know, there are limitations as far as that sort of thing goes. But, you know, again, even on my worst day, I just have to remind myself, like, I get to just play with coral all day and, like, you know, play with my hydrosis and stuff. I, I got to come over. I got to come over because on the hydros, you, you do. Can actually, well, you got to, you got to, um, the hydros is not, the ROI is not just on and off. Actually, oh, you mean an actual, do you guys have an actual unit, like a, a fill, like a RO unit? Well, no, you can, we can turn okay. any unit, you know, you put solenoids in there, you uh -huh. tell me where the solenoids are connected to, and okay. the, as soon as the RO, the hydros turns on the RODI unit, it'll flush it, mm -hmm. it'll open closed solenoids to flush it, you know, do everything it is, then runs it for an hour, then it shuts off the RODI, shuts off the pump, okay. <laughs> flushing, doing the solenoids and everything. So it extends. So no, we've done this extending. I mean, 
Yeah, that's I mean, big... that's something I would look into because, I mean, of all the essentials that kind of need to happen or I'm going to have massive problems, that's kind of at the top of the list. So, no, my our, our, the, right. my hour of the eye unit does that automatically because of the hydros. So Otherwise, you, yours it's is not... automated now. Yes, mine is automated yeah. to the point where it's like I got flood, I got several solenoids in there and it uh -huh. turns on the, the solenoid, it shuts off the bypass, turns on the bypass to flush the unit. And right. do it for about a minute. How you know everything is set in there. You got to remember with yep. hydros, it, it's not just the way we developed it. It was not just some engineer mm -hmm. that we told them, "Hey, do this." Mm -hmm. Is even the main engineer that mm -hmm. works on hydros? He's a hobbyist, yep. mm -hmm. yeah, so he well, knows the helps. he knows the intricacies of it without us having to write everything down. Right. And, he, and, and there's things that, you know, there's things that people wouldn't think about unless they're actually no. using the product. Yeah, exactly. And that's the bit, that's the difference between us and a lot of other controllers is the people that are actually working on it are people like myself. We're working on it all the time. My tank is in my office. Yeah. Dave's tank is in the office. Our engineer's tank is downstairs in his house. So everybody's a hobbyist. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows. I mean, the thing is, even just scrolling through you know, the features and that sort of thing. And, and, and I mean, and this is we don't have to turn this into a giant hydro commercial, but I honestly love it completely. Was an Apex guy since like, you know, the early, you know, two, early when I started. And uh, it, it's, I, I like it a lot. I mean, I could go on and on, but uh, I, yeah. I kind of want to back up on this RO thing. Do you then have the, uh, like the TDS meter that kind of mm -hmm. reads it? And when it gets to a certain point when you're flushing it, Absolutely. then it turns the solenoid back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. You have the, uh, you know, the hydros can actually, one of the inputs that we have, one of the sensors is TDS mm -hmm. meters. So you can actually right. have it, you can actually, that. you can have the, 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 the hydros constantly monitor your RODI also, so mm -hmm. that if the TDS goes to over a certain level, it shuts off the machine and sends you a message saying, hey, the machine is the, the, you know, X, Y, and Z, right. and then you can just work on it. No, I love that. Well, yeah. what, I guess what, what I'm asking is when you, like when you have yours, set up to run it, it will so to kind of avoid TD, tds creep will you have it like flush and is the tds meter reading it, it, that it, line and then shutting it off like when it, it gets to like zero or no six? it so so we don't flush based on the tds okay we flush all the time so that okay. you're being proactive about it because you shouldn't with an exactly. rodi unit you shouldn't run it run it run it until the tds gets to a certain point and then flush it by that point it's too late you sure. should constantly there should be a, a frequency of flushing so our units are the way the hydros runs the rodi unit is every one hour after 60 minutes of running oh, it'll go into a so flush mode and then it'll go 60 minutes flush mode 60 minutes flush mode so it's constantly so it's constantly like flushing while it's, while it's on, like during operation, it'll flush. Yeah. Okay, nice, yeah. nice, not yeah. bad. Not bad yeah. all. And if you don't mind me asking, what uh, RO do you have? Like what actual? Like I have the you? ice, the the ice cap RO. Okay, cool, cool, mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. I have a, a it's a four hundred gallon uh, Spectra Pure, and yes. it actually it was the one. It was like the super ultra high efficiency. I actually modified it to kind of turn it back to a three to one. Like that, the, the ultra high had this kind of mechanism where it would automatically flush. It it never really worked. There were kind of grumblings in it. It never really worked quite right. And I sent it back and I said, just trim it down, make it a three to one. And it's let me, let me do the flushing in there. So that's, that makes it easier because oh, totally. then, that makes it easier because if you have the machine that where it has its own brain, then the hydros can't take over that your machine, since you're doing it manually, yes. that actually <laughs> makes it easier because we can actually have the hydros do that for you, but we can sit down and do that later. And we don't, want to, <laughs> we don't want to turn this show into that. All right. Yeah, no, I, I like, I like it though. See, that's the kind of stuff I like anyway. Anyways, let's move so, in, moving forward. Moving forward. Okay. So this show <laughs> is a, in this show, we also cover a lot of information for newbies because at the end of the day, newbies are the, the lifeblood yeah. of the hobby, you know, um, right. uh, we all folks, you know, we get to a point where you're kind of doing your thing and having new people come in. is actually fun and, and sharing this hobby and making sure that it carries forward. Yep. So, but as newbies, you and I and Dave, we remember the mistakes that we made. So what, give me a couple of common mistakes that you see new aquarium people, new aquarium hobbies make. And, you know, if, if there's an easy way to avoid them. Another good question. Uh, you know, the way information is kind of passed and learned, I think, is a lot different now, obviously, than, you know, 10, even 20 sure. years ago. And, 
you know, it more, more acutely, I think like hobbyist, I think it's kind of difficult for them to navigate all the information that that's out there. Like when you've got an influencer that is also a newbie, but is kind of presenting themselves and I'm not going to knock on that, but uh, you know, someone who's kind of maybe presenting themselves as someone who knows what they're talking about uh, may not be delivering uh, exactly the right information, kind of a Dunning Kruger effect where you've got a lot of people that are new and, you know, as you, I mean, as you're new and you're excited about it, you want to teach people kind of as you are also learning and it may not always be the right information. I, I have learned that like the older I've got, you know, that I think I, I was, all, I kind of also was on that curve and I've gotten a little bit quieter <laughs> in that regard. But uh, as far as actual issues, I think uh, a lot more attention could probably be uh, placed on dipping and quarantining. You know, I, mm. I think that uh, it may be mostly with acros. I don't have a lot of experience with, you know, other corals, obviously, but it can be pretty devastating when uh, you have a pest kind of ruin your tank. I mean, that, that sort of thing. Um, yep. <laughs> it's not. It, it, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. Like it's easy to underestimate until you're going through it, you know, mm-hmm. like, Oh, I won't get him or even like, Oh, he, you know, his coral's fine. I get asked all the time, should I dip your coral? And uh, you know, I always say, even if it's just for practice, like making no exceptions is, is kind of my policy and it, yeah. and it should be yours as well. You meaning, you know, the people who are asking me this question, um, you know, uh, assuming that other hobbies don't have pests or they, they know what they're doing is probably uh, a mistake as well. You know, when, if you're hitting them up for information, but um, I'm trying to think of mistakes that I've made personally, uh, probably, I don't know, I guess it's been a long time. I mean, I have learned as I've gone as well, you know, yep. maybe not researching uh, topics as much. I mean, back in the day, like uh, we kind of went from books to forums and yes. forums are still going strong, but you know, again, kind of learning to differentiate between, I guess, I think I was lucky. I kind of learned, I kind of taught myself how to sift through people who were providing information on Reef Central. Like you could tell people who, who seem to know what they're talking about and you could, you know, kind of, you know, it wasn't always easy to, to tell that people weren't, but, you know, you spend enough time on the forums. Usually you can kind of gravitate towards people who uh, seem to know what they're talking about, at least based on what you've read uh, on the forum. Uh, I think maybe newcomers, uh, chasing numbers, that sort of thing. Um, you hear a lot about that, you know, nutrients and, uh, you know, kind of looking for quick, uh, solutions to problems that probably yep. don't, aren't going to be fixed by whatever they put in, you know, whatever it is, magic, this magic, that, or easy, you know, bacteria in a bottle, that sort of thing. Uh, I think it's one of the things that I've noticed too, is, um, going back to the information and, and trusting the source mm-hmm. is, and we've talked about this, Dave, is that whenever you read something on some, that somebody said, you know, do a little research on that person. Okay. Find out what their tank looks like. See if they got because, any pictures of their tank. Because if they, have a they beautiful, if they have a beautiful tank with big acropores and everything, okay, okay, I'm going to, li- you know, you got my yeah. attention. But yeah. if you have a tank full of just frags, you Ooh. know, I'm going to, uh, you, know, you know, the information might make sense, but I'm going to be cautious about it. Yeah. You know, that is the one thing that I, and, and nowadays we can do that. Back in the day, we had books yeah. and forums and, and you couldn't really check that. Nope. True. But you could assume that if someone went to the trouble of writing a book, of actually sure. writing a book oh, and that it was published, sure. that, I mean, the information in the book is probably credible versus, mm-hmm. I mean, I think even forums are probably probably a lot easier to discern that than social media. You know, and I kind of made a little note about that when you asked me, um, you know, when we talked about what we we're going to talk about. But uh, the idea that I guess the problem is people are being being taught by people who may not really know what they're talking about. You know, mm-hmm. it, it just kind of have something that it's, it's more of an image based uh, popularity than, you know, knowledge based, I guess. Influencer and expert are not the same. Correct. Thing. I guess I think that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I have a lot of friends who, who do that. I mean, I, I don't I'm not going to we're not going to start you know, bashing social media at this point. It is an essential uh, tool f- if you're a business for marketing or, you know, anything like that. I mean, it's here to stay. So I'm not, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. But as far as a learning mechanism. I think it might be harder to kind of sift through it. Mm. Like I never even got on the Facebook uh, groups and that sort of thing. I feel like I devoted my time to forums. It seemed like there's a lot of stuff that got thro- thrown around Facebook and that has kind of even been uh, compressed into social media, which is even kind of a, a of a faster attention span, a shorter attention span uh, way to, for people to present information. 
And, uh, you know, I guess it's just tough to say when I think about like people who you kind of have to put in perspective, like the stuff that I, the stuff that I know about lighting and that sort of thing, a lot of these people have never even heard of or used before. So, I mean, I yep. kind of have to, put yeah. myself, you know, mm-hmm. in the position where I was learning about things that I, I wasn't aware of and all these things that came before it, like they have no idea what that is. So it's like, yep. you kind of have to be in the moment, I guess, in that regard. Um, yeah. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> You're going to yeah. make mistakes, but kind of even turning back to what I said, not introducing pests into a tank that would otherwise be doing well uh, is a good way to avoid mm-hmm. be, just being completely deflated by what happens when you deal with that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, we've all we've all been there. I mean, yes. we've all had uh, pests yeah. and everything. Yeah. I know I know Dave has been, uh, you know, the last yeah, system that you had was pretty yeah. bad. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Yes. I and mean, even and, and nowadays, I mean. I mean, you hear a lot more about like there's things like bacterial pathogen, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. And uh, I mean, even five years ago, this was not a, nothing. None of that was even on my radar. And truth right. is, I don't there's not really a lot of information on how to even address these. I mean, I have a good friend. I guess he's a good friend. I have got to know a, a doctor. Uh, we actually talked about that on, on, a, on another podcast who I was kind of working with about learning a little bit more about antibiotics and kind of what treatments might work and that sort of thing. Uh, it still scares the heck out of me, though. The whole idea mm. of, of kind of doing that and uh, that if I introduce that into my system, like what 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 could happen and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, again, it still comes back to, I guess, my original concept of quarantining and that sort of thing. But if I'm quarantining with the idea that I'm going to keep flatworms out of my tank uh, and not being even aware of things like bacteria, then, you know, it's not uh, it's not. I mean, I've created a whole new problem, essentially. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, or, or just it's something I just don't know about. I don't know. Did when, when we lost a coral ten years ago, did we even consider that it could have been a bacterial thing, or you know, <laughs> it wasn't it on the radar. Like the, the Ignorance tissue, was bliss, was, you know. It mm. wasn't on. Ex, ex, <laughs> was it ever? I mean, that's the thing. Was it ever? Because now, if I see a little, you know, if a polyp looks out of whack, or if I, you know, because frags die. I mean, I got thousands of frags, and sometimes they just die. You know, if my heart still flutters. It's like, oh man, like is this it? Is this the one? Is this like I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be a wave of like skeletons? Mm. But uh, you know, fortunately, you know, that hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Right, right. But Knock on again, wood. You know, what's some maybe trends or changes you've noticed in the in the hobby over the years and and where do you see this trending in the future? Is this sustainable? Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a great question too. And I, I'd say the most obvious kind of blaring uh change has been lighting. You know, we went from in lighting spectrum primarily, obviously mm. going from uh, hey lights and even a 20k that was pretty blue but not like royal blue uh i think probably one of the most pivotal changes in the hobby in the last 10 years is probably blue lighting just uh it's kind of it, it's affected what people like you know uh, yeah. what divers collect because you know they realize that that's what looks good now um as far as i'm concerned it, it kind of changed the the entire kind of scope of what people uh are interested in you know i mean i don't have to tell you uh torches would be a good example yeah mm used to be kind ah. of bargain stuff, a little tentacle thing, kind of looked like an anemone and, but they didn't look that great under, you know, 10 K lights and, and so on. And, uh, it seems like since the advent of, of effective and, and extremely available LEDs that has changed uh, tremendously, like the kind of coral that people keep, the kind of coral people are interested in. And uh, a lot of ways, even kind of pricing has, has kind of been mm. affected, but, um, yeah. I think also testing, you know, has gotten uh, more impressive ICP tests, obviously. And, uh, you know, I think at this point, it seems pretty, pretty concrete. I mean, I know there may be some, some people don't, aren't, aren't quite on board, but, uh, you know, I've had, I've kind of gotten into the routine I bought. And I know that, oh, I'll, I'll just pause for a second. When Carlos asked me to come on here, we originally were going to talk about my transition to fauna marine salt, uh, mm-hmm. which I'll just take a little caveat. Love the salt, fantastic. Uh, but I bought a whole pallet of it, and it came with uh, for every bag I got, uh, I got an ICP test. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a box like forty ICP tests, and uh, and I've been using them. I got I've got two main system. I have, a, I have a main system and a backup system, and I have been sending those in uh, almost weekly now, only because I've been adding nutrients and I, and we talked about this before the before it started. But uh, with since I've been adding ammonia, I've been seeing a, an uptick in my growth. Uh, to the extent that I've never really had to deal with trace elements and that sort of thing because my growth wasn't that substantial. Hmm. Uh, but I'm paying more attention to that sort of thing now. And with ICP testing, it gives me a little better glimpse. I remember I contacted you a couple of weeks ago and said, maybe you can help me out. My zinc is like zero. 
you know, like <laughs> like like three ICP tests in a row. It was zero, and I thought maybe there was a testing error. Uh, I finally got one back last week, and the zinc was way back up after I added zinc. So, you know, things like that where I would yeah. never, you would never be able to do that. I mean, there's no yeah. test, you know, that you would have be able to zero in on things like that. So, you know, again, testing I think is one of the modern things that uh, it kind of a good frontier. And then what we just touched on the bacterial testing. I don't know if you're familiar with the Aquabiomics and Eli. I can't remember his last name. Um, super smart guy. Like I like to listen to smart people, and uh, you know, it seemed like just having that at our at our disposal uh, and kind of like what we just talked about if you being able to tell if there's a bacterial pathogen in your tank uh and then maybe ways to treat it that's new i mean that seems like that we're just at the beginning of, of that i know that that's like that's going to probably give us cures maybe you know an yeah. rtn cure you know things like that mm -hmm. um obviously sit tanks are automated i mean there's a lot more automation and i think it's only going to get better in fact i think i saw i don't know if this is <laughs> I was a dream or not. I'm pretty sure I saw a little thing on Instagram where it was an elk test, but it didn't use any reagents. Is this something? Am I, is this, am I in, in left field here? Like it was a machine. It was an, it was an elk testing machine. And I think it was even Chinese or something. It was just yeah, a weird little. I know what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know what Based off a pH probe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, something like that. And it, it seemed like it was a little, I, I didn't really understand exactly what was going on. Yeah. But it appeared that it was a, an elk testing kit that didn't use reagents. Yes. So, and all that tells me is that all these things are still being developed and, you know, we're, we're just kind of at the, at, at the forefront of, of some of this other cool technology that is down the pipe for sure. Like as, mm -hmm. you know, even AI probably will get, you know, be a part of some of our controllers and that sort of thing, uh, which Absolutely. would be very cool. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, like, I'm, I'm old fashioned and that sort of thing, but I'm not a technology shunner by it at all. In fact, since that one day where you, you know, your apex told me you're turned on your air conditioner. That was, I mean, that was it. Like I became a believer. So well, since, you, since you're using the, the Fauna Mara and ICP, uh, mm -hmm. Carlos might've told you about how the AI kicks in. After yeah. About yeah. And I, and I think I've no. sent enough in that I, yep. I'm getting that now I haven't accessed that, but yeah, it will give you projections about what maybe to expect in that sort of thing. Correct. So, I think the big difference between, you know, again, I don't want to turn this into a Funnel Marine thing, but sure. the difference between Funnel Marine and the other ICP machines is that after you send five tests all monthly, mm -hmm. then it, it opens up into this AI and it looks at the way the elements work together. So it's not just looking at iron. It's not just looking at strontium. It's mm -hmm. looking at how everything reacts. It's almost like a doctor in a human body. A human body just doesn't tell you, oh, this is wrong. Everything is intertwined. Nothing is an island. So if you go into the AI, there's five different elements that if you have them at the right level, mm -hmm. you're statistically and chemically, that will reduce the chance of you getting RTN, STN, algae. And all these other things, bacterial infections, because those elements at a particular level where the coral likes it and it's not stressed out. So right. it's not just one element, but it's the, it's the combination of five elements and how they play together. And then when you send enough ICP tests with Fauna Marine, it opens up that area where you actually see this. And then you're like, OK, I need to add a little more of I need to add a little more of nickel or I need to add another a little more vanadium or something zinc in your case because you can see that wait a minute it this out of the five elements everything is in the green and this one's starting to go yellow and probably going to go red so let me bring that up because now I know that I have it's it's a fuller picture than just an element it's like yeah I mean zinc is low that's that's fine and dandy but how does it relate to other elements uh -huh. and how that relation affects the cores no, I agree. And and what's interesting too, even, you know, as far as the future goes, the more this data, I mean, like as the database grows, we'll, we'll, we'll find trends. We'll, we'll be able to kind of discover things that we certainly wouldn't have without that sort of testing. We're like, right. mm -hmm. I mean, all the information that they have and are able to kind of save and, and, and uh, archive is valuable stuff, you know, especially moving forward. So, I mean, I kind of became a firm believer in that just at the very least to I would maybe send in a, a test if the tank was doing really well. I would send one in if the tank was yes. doing poorly, I would send one in. Uh, but since I got that big, you know, economy box full of them, uh, I've never <laughs> I've never been. And, and the thing is, I've never been this in tune to my tank either. Like having that at my disposal. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they're still doing if you still get that test with the with the salt. But that is a cool deal, man, because it's yeah. just it's the sort of thing where, uh, like I said, I've never been this in tune. My, 
I wouldn't have known that my zinc was low. And we even talked about maybe setting up a doser on the hydros uh, for just zinc. And I'm going to wait and see. I got another test. I sent another one in this Monday. I think it, it made it and it'll probably be out. I, and I think I've been getting my results in about a week too, which is pretty impressive. Um, even an, another thing I was going to touch on, I would imagine as the technology kind of grows and gets better, uh, the turnaround for those tests will get more impressive or we may even be able to like, I don't, I, I'm, I'm sure the machine is insanely expensive and, and sophisticated, but I mean, there was a time where people said there's no way an elk testing kit could ever be feasible for out for less than like a hundred thousand dollars. And, mm. and, and now we've got them. So, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. the, I mean, moving forward, maybe like in 20 years from now, we can, we can have ICP tests in our houses. I mean, yeah. or immediate results or something like that. Where like, I somehow put my water on a, on a, a little something and, and, and send it off and, and I get my results right away. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. I mean, we're kind of talking sci-fi stuff, but still, so was, you know, automated elk testing, you know, 20 years ago, which we've yeah. got yes. multiple, I mean, it's nothing new at this point. It's like old hat. So in fact, I've got right next to, <laughs> I've got a whole box. You can't see it, but I'm kind of going to do a garage sale, a bunch of used stuff in this big heap of pile here is the old KH Guardian that I got from you back in like, <laughs> wow. 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 we're still with, I got a bag of the reagents uh, all right. As long as I got it right next to me, I didn't plan this, but here it is. Right. Here. Oh yeah. my God! There it is, yep. right there. That uh, was the first. That was the first machine, actually. Yeah. With the triple, yeah, it. like, and it would dose for you if you wanted. And I used it for a while. Mm -hmm. And and here's the thing. I kind of am lazy, and it got to a point where having to kind of keep up with the rage and that's and that sort of thing was not as efficient for me as uh, mm. just testing. Just boom, boom, I can test my elk in like eight seconds now. It's really yeah. fast. And yeah. like just between that, having to empty the reservoir and all that sort of thing. But uh, we're going to pivot to hydros again. I am absolutely going to get that Maven uh, when it's available because <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I have been testing uh, nitrates and phosphate daily, which is not something I, I have been doing. I mean, this is all kind of new to me as well. Um, but I'm kind of looking forward to not having to, <laughs> to, yeah. to yeah. do that. <laughs> so it was, was assuming too. that it's full. Well, and that even kind of brings me back to what I was going to say that technology without the reagents, if that could be applied to some of these other testing uh, methods would be game changers for pretty much anyone uh, in the yeah. hobby. So things like that. I'm sure there's just as cool stuff down the line for all of us to, uh, you know, be amazed by. And lighting Absolutely. too. I mean, it seems like LED technology is changing pretty fast. And it's only getting yes. better, like super fast. So, yeah. you know, I mean, it's exciting stuff. I think that uh, the more hobbyists that, and it's good to have like smart people that are young <laughs> get involved because, you know, they're the ones who are going to innovate and do things that you and I never thought of and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. With any luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, uh, we just want to say thank you. I mean, it, usually it's about a 30 minute podcast. Go, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay, man. You know, you know what that means? You just, you just have to come back, you know, and we'll go, we'll go over other things in here, but anytime. I wanted to say thank you for joining us. I mean, yes, I appreciate you know, it. Yeah, I, I know you do a lot of shows and people ask you what's the secret sauce and everything. And I know what the answer is on that one. Um, uh, but I just wanted to kind of have a show with you that is just kind of talk about you and what you thought yeah, about I the hobby it. and all that stuff, you know, kind of like, Hey, it's just, how about you, man? I don't want, you know, it's like your corals are great, but how about Adam? You yeah. know? <laughs> just a big dork, dude. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I yeah. mean, that's kind of what it comes down to. And I, you know, I, I kind of get to do my own thing. I mean, kind of even coming back to like why I, it's fun for me. Like, you know, I, I, I like I get to do my own thing. I get to name these things goofy and whatever. Yeah. And, and people somehow still are interested in that. So as yeah, long absolutely. as I can keep doing that, I, I don't plan on uh, stopping anytime soon. As long as, as long as I can sell it, you know, legally and, uh, you know, and people can have tanks. Uh, I don't see any reason to, to stop anytime soon. So, yeah. Well, I mean, thank you so much. I want to say yeah, thank always. you to our, uh, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Dave. I want to say thank you to uh, April and Jeremy, our production team. They're always rocking and they're, they always make us look good. Uh, I want to say thank you to our listeners also and uh, people watching us on YouTube. Again, if you want to subscribe, you can uh, listen to us on a podcast. We are available on Spotify. Also, we're available on YouTube, uh, CBTV channel. Uh, thank you again for watching. Adam, as always, a pleasure having yeah. you. Thank you so much for, 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 for the thank time. You. We appreciate it. Dave, thank you so much yeah, again for joining absolutely. us and, and making this happen. Everybody, yeah. thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time. Right now. Thanks, guys. Bye.